Hi, it's great to have you on your daily word and it's Pastor William here from Joy Christian Center. Well, in yesterday's episode, we concluded with the prayers that Nehemiah prayed because of the information he had received, what he heard um, from Hanani and the other brothers who had returned um, from exile and they visited him in the palace of Susa and told him about the plight of um, the returnees, that things were terrible. And the Bible says that Nehemiah wept and he moaned and then he prayed and fasted for days. And so we want to capitalize on that in today's episode to talk about the prayer life of a leader. According to Dr. John C. Maxwell, leadership is influence. That means every parent, pastor, teacher, to name a few, is a leader because these people actually have a position of influence in their sphere. One indispensable quality of a Christian leader is his or her prayer life. A person who knows how to pray, knows the mind of God, and will invariably influence his followers. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5 to 11, the second portion of chapter 1, we're going to read about the very words that Nehemiah spoke to God when he prayed. Now, let's read and analyze the prayers for our own personal edification. So, Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5 to 11. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands, listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember that you told us, you told your servant Moses, if you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commandments and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. O Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it in his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. And it is always a blessing to read and especially to act on what God's word says. Amen, somebody. Well, once again, I want to pick some three very important um, things in this prayers that Nehemiah prayed. It is a wonderful thing that by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we have these things recorded for us. Because Nehemiah, as we will see in later chapters, was a very good record keeper that he kept clean records of everything he was doing. That's why chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that these are the memoirs of Nehemiah, the son of Hilkaliah. And so he himself penned down what he had prayed. A very powerful principle for you and I to learn that sometimes we need to write down our prayer. You see, when you pray, you can pray um, the freestyle. And basically, there will be no record of that prayer you forget what you said even but if you actually wrote down what you said you will always remember that prayer because why it is written it is recorded i do that from time to time it's a great thing to do have a book that sometimes you will record the prayers you pray especially the prayers you pray for family members members of your church pastors and so on and so forth another good thing is that when the prayer is answered you can go back to your record Put one straight line through it. Don't scribble. Just one straight line through it. Why? 
You just need to, you know, write on top of that answered. So that the day the devil is messing with you, you can go back to your recorded prayers that have been answered and you can tell the devil, checkmate. I have proof that God answers prayer. So let's quickly look at the three things. In verse 5, Nehemiah started with adoration. He was adoring God, telling God who he was and who he is. And in verse 6 to 7, Nehemiah moved on from adoration to confession, where he started confessing not his own sin, not just his own sin, but the sin of his father's house, his ancestors, and the whole nation. Repentance, confession, and repentance is a very powerful principle. I believe that in this season of this coronavirus, it is one of the things we have to do. A lot of the time we pray, God, remove this plague, and etc., etc. But have we sat down to ask God why he allowed this plague to strike the, the, the universe, I mean, the, 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 the whole um, global enterprise? Have we asked God why this plague has stricken us? The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face and pray to me, he said, I will hear and I will answer them and heal their land. Maybe we need to consider starting from a place of confession of our sins and repentance. And the Lord who is faithful will remove the plague. The third thing Nehemiah did in his prayers is that is found in verse 8 to 11. He petitioned God. He said, listen to my prayer and I want you to do this and I want you to do that. As a man or a woman in a position of influence, do you pray for yourself and other people? confess their sins and yours do you make requests for god to remember his promise and meet every need friends prayer is the master key to every closed door make it your goal like nehemiah to always seek first the mind of god before you act on any idea or project this is because you need god to touch the hearts of kings and queens in quotation marks, so they can favor you. Sila, and may the Lord bless and keep you.